Hello everyone and welcome to another district video. So today we're going to be taking a look at Schooner Greasefang in Historic. The reason for the Schooner is because we are playing a new vehicle from the Lost Caverns of Ixalan called the Subterrarian Schooner. This is a 2 mana vehicle with the stats 3-4. Whenever this attacks, target creature that crewed it this turn explores. And it has Crew 1 as the cost. Crew 1 is kind of insane. And the best thing about this card is the fact that it is a 3-4, so it does dodge Wizard's Lightning. And we do have some synergy with this card. Being able to explore, you can put a Parhelion from the top of your deck into the graveyard and then play out the Grease Fang the turn after. Or just get a free card out of it every single turn by exploring and getting an extra land out of it. So basically this lets you dig a little deeper to your deck, trying to get the Parhelion into the graveyard or try to look for the Grease Fang as well as finding an Inquisitor Captain that, that can also get a Grease Fang down onto the battlefield. So And at the same time, Grease Fang has some synergy with a Subterranean Schooner considering that this is a vehicle. It's not going to be the most amazing effect if you get the Schooner down with the Grease Fang. But hey, if you don't have the Parhelion in the graveyard, the moment you play the Grease Fang, you get Get the schooner down onto the battlefield and then haste it get an additional land or dig a little deeper into trying to get the right cars on top so i think this car is going to be pretty nice and in another note diviner of fates was unnerved a few patches ago i don't know if you actually witnessed this card in action post nerf which makes this card playable again in historic this card used to be a three mana two one but now it is back to 3 mana 2 3. And if you do connive and discard a non land card, this will become a 3 4. So, with that said, we're going to be jumping into some historic best of three to show you guys how the deck does. So, let's hop on over. Um, Loris? Oh, it's a ninja deck. Okay. At least we have a really good car for um to to block the changing outcast if it ever becomes a four four. I don't I I doubt they're going to, yeah. Mm. Okay. Kind of annoying. Okay, realistically, it's actually better to get rid of a Divin Diviner of Fate. Try to see, like, if we can draw into some other card, and they also don't know what we have. Right? Okay, that's another Fairy Seer. Yeah, I'm gonna block this. Again, I'm going to discard the Esper Sentinel instead of the Parhelion. And then at the end of their turn, we're going to discard Parhelion. Now we're going to try to win with the Grease Fang here. Okay, that's stuck around. Which is great. Exactly what we wanted. Now we also have some flying creatures as well.
I think we have this. Actually, block like this. That's a silver for a master. They would have to have another thousand face shadow here. Okay, I think we got this. Okay. I'm not sure about the Septarian Schooner here. I think I will bring this Kaisel Larsenist and Skyclave Operations. Also, some Fragment Reality can go a long way as well. Bringing some uh, Thalia as well. Uh, not sure about the Schooners in this matchup. I do want to cut some Schooners out. And this is actually kind of tough because I'm bringing a lot of cars here. Maybe I'm actually supposed to take out like a Parhelion. Maybe a Rafine. How good is Dahlia? Creature, creature, that's a lot of creatures. I'll go down on a copy of Dahlia. You know what? Screw Dahlia. The ninjutsu wing doesn't even get attacks anyways. What a start. What a start. So they might actually not get rid of the Ornithopter if they have a ninjutsu cars in their hand. That's exactly what happened. That is exactly what happened. Double top. That's kind of scary. I hate the fact that we have double mana confluence here. Silver Fur Master. I'm kind of surprised they... I mean, I only get punished if this is exactly that one mana card. Um, one mana ninjas card that copies. So tough. I think this game is over. I go to 10. Yeah, I don't I don't see I I don't see a way out. I go to 10, they have two three twos and four four if they sacrifice this. There's no way out. Okay, I'll bring some Sheldra's Edict then compared to the schooner. Their star was just too fast with the retrofitter. Man, we haven't been getting any one mana cards. What's up with that? I was about to say, if they have exactly the same cars again, I'd be incredibly upset. Okay, so of the one mine seems like a car to get rid of. Seems good. Currently, they have zero ninjutsu cores, so... Hmm. 
Hmm. Nice. That was actually perfect. Ooh, mana confluence. They play their fatal push. I feel like this Juggernaut. If I play the Juggernaut Peddler, like that doesn't do anything, right? Like, let's say they draw land. All they're gonna get is a hex hex mage. Um, that was a terrible Inquisitor Captain. Oh, that's good. That's really good. Take four a turn. Or force out... I, I go to 8, I go to 7, if they attack. I think... I go to 7. I, I, I don't think I can do it. I have to get rid of it. Ooh, Fragment Reality, that's really good. Um... I take two. I'm gonna Inquisitor Captain first. See what I get. Wow, these are really unimpressive. There's the Grease Fang. There's the Grease Fang. I think I actually have to let go of the Fragment Reality here. As weird as that sound... Because I have Grease Fang next turn. And I think this should be game. Like, because I go to six here. They attack with a Changing Outcast, I go to 6. And even if they get a Lord, I go to 2, right? So I think no matter what, they're going to die. I'm just gonna play as carefully as possible here, I guess. Um... Okay, this looks good. I don't have- I don't know if I have lethal. Seasoned... Yeah, I think we just discard everything except the Sheldra's Edict. That should be game. I don't think, like, 
I don't think there's any card they can top deck and win the game here. Okay, this is supposed to be a schooner deck, but... <laughs> Where are the schooners at? Yeah, I was about to say no white mana, but there, there it is. Oh, I'm not even sure if uh, shocking this is actually going to be relevant. That's two damage I'm taking. I'm not sure if that's going to be relevant, but we'll see. But it might actually deter them from... Okay, we actually got a card. That's actually really, really nice. Are you kidding me? That is so unfortunate. So now we can't play the Season Hollow Blade because of uh, Melt Through. Feels bad. We got a Chandra though. giving me cards. Okay, well, I'm just going to double block then. Yeah, I, I, I have to chump block. There's no way. There is no way. Ooh, Parhelion. So we just have to survive one more turn. And make them tap out here. Okay. This is so perfect. We make double four fours. And we're at 9, which is awesome. Very nice. Okay, so Archon? I think Boromir actually might be good. Boromir might be good. Ledger Shredder could be good. I think Juggernaut is bad. And um, Dahlia could be really good. I'm gonna take out a Parhelion. Um, I want a Fragment Reality. I'm gonna take out the Juggernauts. You know what? I'll try something like this. The Schooner should be pretty good because it's a 3-4. Perfect. Well, I'm just going to get rid of this real quick. I'm going to play the Season Hallow Blade. If they have a melt through, like, whatever. If it's anything else, then it would have been pretty good, right? I was just afraid of, um... The helix there with Ledger Shredder up. Hmm. What is the hardest card to kill? I think it's Rafine, right? They also can't kill it at the moment. Maybe I should have actually blocked. Ooh, 
Okay, that's actually perfect. Another Rafine. I think I'm gonna get rid of a Ledger Shredder. And I'll play a Boromir as a blocker. This chump block is still good because it's it's still one for one, right? And they still have a hard time killing this Rafine. Probably should have attacked first before playing this. Thankfully, we didn't get punished. That's good. Back to 1 4. I'm gonna play the Ledger Shredder. There's a light up the stage. I really want to play this Diviner of Fate. But... I can't not play the Inquisitor Captain. Let's attack first, actually. Thalia. That is a good card. Oh my god, these Inquisitor's captains are just... Keep, they keep coming! Oh no. I think I'm just going to chump block then, if this is what they're doing. This is their third light up the stage. Kind of insane. On the other hand, this is our third Inquisitor Captain. Ooh. I think I'm actually good. I don't want to I don't want to tag. I am currently scared though. I I'm at 6. This is their fourth light up the stage. Oh my god. Dear lord. What? Oh boy. They topped. Oh my god. Okay, we see a Parhelion finally. If we get a land, we win the game. Right? Thirteen, sixteen, all things considered, that was actually a pretty close game.
GG's. Still haven't seen the schooner. Oh. I can't believe I have to mulligan this hand. Are you kidding me? Are you are you are you kidding me? Feels bad. Oh my god. Look what I have to deal with. Feels awful. Unbelievable. Uh, at least give me like a Ledger Shredder or Season Hollow Blade. No, okay. Mm, am I playing against a control deck? Looks like it. Lotus Field. It could be a control deck. It could be a combo deck as well. I'm gonna guess combo here. Gas. Um, all things considered, mulliganing down to five, five here, we are actually able to play the game somewhat. Opponent was thinking a lot. We'll play the Inquisitor Captain. I was thinking about like maybe attacking first and then if they do something play the Inquisitor Captain but I mean they have or they already have like five mana I feel like that's like so much mana right they can easily play like two ca two cars at the same time oh my god how did that stick uh Excuse me? They have a Snapcaster Mage. How did this stick? So they're going to approach next turn? I mean, I'd rather not die to approach. Can they win before... I mean, the thing is, this gains them 7 life. Oh man. I think the play is actually get rid of the Archmage Charm. Yep. I think that was the play. Boom. We want that in the graveyard, so Grease Fang can get it back. How is this taking so long? Okay, we got there. Um, Thalia's in. So they're gonna have... To, it's a Lotus Field combo deck. Well, it's probably just a control deck. I wanna bring some Boromir and the Remorseful Cleric. I'm just not sure about the Fragment Reality here. Do I care about Graveyard Hate? Do I actually care about it? I have so many discard spells, right? Like, I feel like I shouldn't care about it too much. It's actually kind of hard, hard to sideboard. Like, what am I supposed to take out? Maybe like Grease Fang and a Parhelion? If we ever go first next time, I think I will actually bring Parhelion plus a Grease Fang. But when I'm going second, probably not. So that's either... I think it's the Fragment Reality. It's not. Lorien's Revealed? Maybe it's Lorien's Revealed. 
Oh, it's a plane cycling. So... I think we're just going to play the peddler here. So I'm gonna guess this is like a reprieve. I'm just going to peddler this. Um, if they reprieve, we get a card out of it. Okay, apparently not. It's just a plain cycling. Okay, we got... Okay, that's really good. We got a card out of it. Oh, uh, we got... We still have another Juggernaut Peddler. I still think we want a Peddler instead of a Thalia. Because let's say they have like a Divine Purge and they draw into a land. They can still purge even with the Thalia, but... If it's the only Divine Purge, we can get the Divine Purge out of it. And also... We also get some information, right? I am going to attack here first. Um, if it's a Snapcaster Mage, do I want to attack the Esper Sentinel? Um, I think I do. They lose out on Snapcaster Mage value. Playing around Jawari, just in case. Alright, that's <laughs> enough to win the game. Oh, we have the schooner. Been a while since we've seen a schooner. No, my schooner is too powerful. Okay, I mean... What can you do, right? We tried. What's a deck that would play, like, a bunch of portable holes? Huh? When this enters the battlefield, it deals 5 damage to tap target creature and opponent controls. Um, I'm just going to assume this is, like... A Doom? Doom foretold? I think that we should at least get to the fourth mana, right? Because we have Inquisitor Captain in this deck. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine out of the 13 cars are lands. Thank God we have our theme. Otherwise, it would have been terrible. It's unfortunate that we have to get rid of a Schooner, or not. Perfect. That is a power-up Schooner, right? <laughs> We've seen it here, folks. Turn 2 Schooner, too powerful, it has to be Portable Hold. We get a Schooner into our hand, and opponent just surrenders immediately. <laughs> like... I can't actually play with this card. Every time I get it, it's just like, 
everything just goes wrong. I think Archon is actually unironically going to be pretty good because Doom for Toltex you usually want to play more like multiple cars per turn, right? Because they want like sacrifice targets. We'll play some Skyclave operations and Fragment Reality. Let's get rid of a Ledger Shredder. Get rid of Ruin is kind of sick. Um, let's get rid of a Rafine. Let's cut some combo. They probably know we're playing Grease Fang. Okay, maybe Art, not Archon. I'm just going to get rid of a Giver Runes. Because if it's Doom Foretold, it's most likely like they're not going to have that many target effects. They're probably just going to Doom Foretold. Let me choose a target so I think Giver Runes is kind of bad. Okay, excellent. This is an excellent hand. Fiddlebender! Oh dear. I'm passing and not fragmenting reality because I don't know their deck. Um, they could get a one mana creature for all I know. Like that. That's a lot of lands. Uh, we have our black source. Do I want another second black source? I think I do. If Bell turned through our deck, we've gone through a lot of lands now. This is what we call stonks. Discard a creature, get two creatures. So what does this do? Exile a creature you control or a creature card from the graveyard and then return this transformed. At the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Oh, that's really cool. I've actually played this recently. They're doing that. Okay. So the most logical thing to do is play the Rafine and Juggernaut Peddler. But there's a part of me that just wants to play the Schooner out. Just because I'm, I'm trying to test the Sukuners, but the opportunity doesn't come up too often, let me tell you that much. I have to attack with all three of them. Hmm. Maybe I should have actually played the schooner instead of the ravine. Because I wasn't going to be able to attack anyways here. So they're going to be able to transform the Thousand Moon Smithy next turn. There it is. Doom foretold. Maybe I should actually attack with everything.
How's this gonna work? Am I gonna get a creature off of this Diviner of Fates? Like, or is it just random? No. We got... Like, what is that? What? Was, was that just random? So they're going to be able to transform the Thousand Moon Smithy, but they have to tap the Thousand Moon Smithy. Which means that it's going to become a land tap, right? Yeah, give me a... So, it's it's weird. So, last time we put the land third from the top. So, we discarded thir four cards and then we got rid of a land for our third card. This time around, we got rid of the land the first time. So, I guess it's just random. I think it's just random. I also kind of like, like, in a deck like this, right, where you could get the schooner back. Like, I kind of like the fact that we have a another vehicle outside of Parhelion. Okay, well, the Wrath of God top deck was really good. I mean, excuse me, not the Wrath of God top deck, it was a uh, Beseech the top deck. So we still have two more Grease Fang in our deck. Yeah, and the fact that like these have like a really affordable crew cost is also like really nice. What a card. Okay. GG's. Okay, so...
We've been playing this for seven games now. Currently, we are six and one. So the schooner has been really good versus like more controlly decks. And even against some um, decks that would run things like burn spells, uh, schooner has been pretty good. Just because of the 3-4 body, Wizard's Lightning doesn't kill it, Play With Fire doesn't kill it. And the fact that this has a really low crew cost means that like as even as for Sentinel can crew this card. So I mean it's it's a bit rough for an aggro deck if you're trying to get over this card because this this is <laughs> this is a turn two three four body. So I really do feel like this is a really good card. But unfortunately, in this session, besides the one that got off screened where I wasn't commentating and the last two games that I played against a more control deck, the schooner hasn't been showing up, basically. And against like things like ninja decks, so like any decks that would play retrofitter, you wouldn't want to play Subterian Schooner because you can't block the four force. So there are some matchups where you don't want this card. But that's okay because uh, you can just sideboard these out and, uh, for like Dahlia or Skyclave Apparitions, right? So it's not like uh, we don't have a sideboard cars for that either. But what I'm saying is in best of one, it's probably better to stick with something better. Um, if you would be playing best of one, the card that I recommend instead of a schooner, although it's not like new cars or anything, either you play Thalia or you play Lavinia. So whenever an opponent casts a spell, if no mana was spent to cast it, counter that spell. If they would do something like a discover combo, you would just counter everything. So that's really nice. Or you could you could also play an Arcana of Emeria as well. That's an option. And like I said, just playing out the Thalia is also pretty nice as well. The problem with Thalia is they could still combo over the Thalia if they just have enough mana. And I have actually seen it before. You just need three more mana to beat a Thalia. Because if you can just Eldritch Evolution three times, I think you would have enough four to actually just go over Thalia. Or, I mean, the deck does play four copies of Juggernaut Peddler, so... Obviously, this is going to be pretty good in best of one. Um, other cards you may consider are more copies of Season Hollow Blade or even more copies of Giver Runes. Um, besides that, the mana base has been a little bit wonky. So there was actually a version that I was testing before this, this before playing the Schooner. I had some issue with the mana base, but it seems like it has been resolved after adding four copies of Mana Confluence. So that's great. And the Divinator of Fates buff definitely showed. There were times I could just play this card out, even against a burn deck. And if they didn't hold up a burn spell to kill them at three toughness, it became really hard, actually. Even at three toughness, because only Wizard's Lightning actually deals with the Divinator of Fate at three toughness. So if they didn't kill it at three toughness, it becomes a three four. If anything has four toughness against like a when you, when you're playing a burn deck, it becomes really hard. Like especially like Rafine, Divinor Fates, Subterian Schooner, or even like Leisure Shredder. So that's really it for the main board. Um, the sideboard is kind of weird. Um, I'm playing two copies of Sheldred's uh, Edict, the blue white scam matchup. Otherwise, I would be playing four copies of Fragment Reality. It's just kind of an unfortunate side effect of um, having blue white scam deck in the format and I'm playing the Archon of Memoria and two copies of Boromir for the Discover matchup, Discover Discover combo deck matchup. The Archon of Memoria stops the Discover because they because the Discover is casting. Uh, same with Boromir. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, if no mana was spent to cast it, counter that spell. The Boromir is pretty nice because against a board wipe tribal deck, Boromir does have that secondary effect. You can sacrifice it to give your creatures indestructible. And the ring also tempts you. So if you go through two copies of Boromir, then your creature is going to start drawing, uh, looting a card. So this card has usages versus control plus the discover matchup. So pretty nice. And then I'm playing as a third copy of Skyclave Apparition instead of um, I'm playing a Larcenist instead because 
The double white is going to be hard to cast sometimes, but but I do recognize that Skyclave Apparition is just a better card. Even the Skysail Larsness, right? It can get rid of an artifact a player controls, which could be Graver Hate or Pithing Needle for our Grease Fangs. So Kaisel Larson is honestly really, really good, but um, I, I do have two copies of Skyclip Apparition over having more Larsonists, only because this can also get rid of an enchantment, which could be a rest in peace, right? So yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed the video so far. And if you did, as always, leave a like, comment below, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.